Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the X-Force Global channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Today we're back with another Bitcoin analysis and I'm here to make sure to update the price section from our prior analysis and see how we can go forward with it. As a quick disclaimer, I must cater to both the bulls and bears, so I hope my analysis shows a neutral approach to help build your own thesis on the bearish or bullish outcome. But nevertheless, I do share my probabilities and personal sentiment that is deemed not financial advice. Now, continuing from our prior expectation, I did mention that the idea of this X wave being possibly created after we have created that B pocket expanded zone, and that is exactly what we got. We've been talking about this for the past few weeks, and now we're working in that final C wave to finish off this X wave of this larger WXY combo type pattern. Now this combo pattern for this wave Y is still to be determined. We don't know what's going to be happen for that expectation. But again, this idea still remains my overall primary expectation since we're still working in that narrative of that impulse to complete this wave C of this wave X. Now again, the, the most important thing about the Elliott wave theory is not about the conviction of our analysis because we can sit here all day and say, I told you so, right? We were right. That shouldn't be the focus. Rather, we should be focusing on continuing the reduction of the least probable scenarios, such as whether we need to be taking profits, right? And also increasing the probabilities of our good wave counts as price action develops, which means we need to know how to work around the motive or impulsive waves, and of course the corrective waves respectively. We could always transition to new probabilities, and I think that is where the shortcoming is for the LA wave theory. It's a weakness of having a lot of scenarios, but it's it is also its greatest strength, essentially a double-edged sword by having so many scenarios. And I think that's where uh, the shortcoming happens with a lot of analysts. They give too many scenarios and they don't give a proper uh, adjusted probability in terms of percentage of what is going to be playing out more. So if you're able to work with that conviction and use it to your advantage, then you can always adjust the internal counts. But the most important thing since we're working in so many hybrid scenarios of different actionary waves and reactionary waves, our actionary waves at the time of recording is this wave one and three, right? Remember, our actionary waves can be replaced for these waves one and three as a wave A or C. So as long as you are able to um, take into consideration for whatever we're working and combine that with other possible simple technical indicators as such as momentum indicators or what the market sentiment is, you can really get a grasp or good idea of where the bounces and the uh, impulses will happen. So technically, we need to still be seeing if this move is working impulsively to the upside or seen as some kind of correction that is deemed complete or near complete, which is also observed from the bearish analysis. And that's why I think people aren't familiar with the basic tenets of the LA wave theory in terms of these actionary and reactionary waves. Remember, within the um, five wave impulse, waves one, three and five are going to be the actionary waves and waves two and four are the reactionary waves. And that's the same thing for the corrective waves. Since you're working in the direction of the trend or the correction, our corrective moves of the waves A and the wave C are also deemed actionary. So this is why it's important to understand if you're in a wave one or a wave A, and also if you're in a possible wave C or a wave three of some sort, and that's why we use the idea of Fibonacci guidelines to help us along our way to help observe, you know, with the combination of fundamentals or market sentiment to help boost our confidence on whether you're in a new impulse of a corrective structure. So this is why I, I always mention we could always be in hybrid scenarios. And I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated because they see too many scenarios. But again, I'm doing my best in terms of making sure that we organize it as best as possible. And this is why I'm still working with this narrative idea that we might be in some kind of combo. So again, we have this flat idea going into wave W. And so we, since we exhaust the flat idea, our last Y leg and based on the correction alternation is that we're gonna be seeing a possible zigzag or some kind of triangle idea in the making. Again, waves Y can only have a triangle. So that idea is still there. We just don't know how it's going to be playing out. Now, the most important thing, again, like I said, is this move here, whether this is wave one or wave A of some kind of other bearish alternative. But for now, since this move was so impulsive off of the lows as a 16% move, 
I do believe that this is going to put us into a wave one of some sort, either as a very bullish scenario or the idea that we have here as a wave X that we're working in this impulsive five wave move for this wave C. So in terms of validating this idea further, what we want to be looking for is this possible move going up into the 618 or the 70% 7, uh, of this Fibonacci level and then have this wave three end and then we retrace because that'll give us a little bit more room since the wave one was so impulsive, this really gives us not much room to work with in terms of how far this wave four is going to be able to retrace. And if in the case that wave five has already ended, which is very possible, wave five ending here, this is going to be giving us very, very tight wiggle room if we're going to be working in some kind of sideways corrective structure. So this wave four sideways corrective structure is going to be the most expected because wave two was so sharp and wave one was so extended. This is pretty much forcing us to work on this idea that wave four is going to be sideways or at least assumed sideways. And we're going to be working up in between the 70% and the 90% to finish off this X wave. And then we're going to be looking for that Y, uh, y wave. So that's the first sentence, first scenario. We have another idea that we want to be talking about and I've talked about this idea for quite a bit, which is the double zigzag scenario where wave four has completed. Now this idea has now become my primary pretty much because the wave one, two, and this move here is starting to look impulsive. There's just no way around it. This move here, since it's being so impulsive and bringing these previous highs here, and especially this high here that we're kind of tinkering back and forth around these regions, gives me the sense that we may be working in a possible larger one, two, one, two idea where we might be even going further up instead of just correcting down for that wave Y like we have that for that first scenario. So again, this double zigzag scenario, working with that WXY scenario, we're going to be saying that wave Y has completed here for that wave four. And again, we originally had this as a possible 30% scenario. 30 to 40 percent probability rather and now this idea of to me personally is upgraded to maybe 60 or 70 percent since the lows are still being protected quite nicely since we're so high we got a lot of room before we invalidate any kind of one two idea so what kind of one two ideas can we build upon this idea so again we're working in that one two idea thinking that this is now the beginning of something since we found the end of something here and we have uh finished this as a double zigzag so if this is working in a one, two, one, two idea, we're going to be looking for some kind of pullback very soon. Again, if we're working with a wave three, four, five, and then five is now either starting to complete or looking like it's complete, then we're going to be looking for this one, two pullback, right? And then we're going to be looking for another idea that's now starting to lose its validity at this time of recording where we have a possible B pocket expanded zone working in this possible one, two as an expanded or running flat variation, where if we do pull back further and break this previous territory of wave one, then we're going to be looking at this as a possible C wave of a larger ABC as a running again, or a C wave where it goes below the, uh, the origin of wave A. And then this here, as long as this low is protected around the 56k regions, this idea is still deemed as extremely valid. So since we're starting to create some kind of range, I'm starting to think that this is going to be my primary idea against that wave X idea. Again, that wave X idea is just more of a rational idea for me. Uh, I don't want to be super bullish just right off the bat. So this idea, um, my heart says it, but my head says not. So I hope you understand what that means. Again, both ideas extremely bullish. Now we do have another possible one, two idea, but it's a little too early to say, which is still saying that this wave three, four ended as a double zigzag. But again, we're working with a leading diagonal possibility here where we're looking for a possible five, three, five, three, five. And again, remember leading diagonals only can work with a three, 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 or a possible five, three, five, three, five variation in order to be deemed as a valid leading diagonal. So we have a possible impulse. We're utilizing, utilizing this rather as an impulse, corrective structure as a three wave, impulse wave for wave three. And if in the case we do go back for a pullback into the price territory of wave one, this can still give us that possibility that we're working in a wave four corrective of a, of a possible diagonal. And then we're going to be looking for another five way move up to complete this leading diagonal. Again, it cannot truncate, can't be below wave three, but as long as we're above wave three and it works in the fashion of an impulse wave, then this is going to be completing our impulse uh, to the upside for the subwave fifth. And that'll be completing this overall leading diagonal into a possible primary wave 
wave one and then looking for a larger pullback and again this idea same thing these lows are protected and wave two will come back into the price territory of a major fibonacci ratio of a 618 possibly or the 786 a deep retracement wouldn't really be mattering since as long as this idea is going to be protecting these lows here and then we'll be off to the races from here so this idea is still a little too early. Usually I like to validate my diagonals with a fourth subwave and a small potential bounce and a retracement. That is when I'll start possibly upgrading this probability to my second or third idea. We'll have to see. But again, this idea is just more of a sub scenario and more entertainment than anything else because diagonals, they're really fun to trade, right? They're just really fun to work with because again, as an Elliott Wave analyst, we like to work with geometry and symmetry. And these are kinds of the patterns that we really like to play around with and tinker with um, just to you know start to give the scenario, types of different scenarios. So that's the hybrid idea of that one too. And then we have another bear scenario. Again, going back to the idea of that possible hybrid idea of actionary and reactionary waves, this wave one can now essentially be a wave A. So how are we working for this wave A? It has to be, again, the beginning of something now. If we're working for a possible one, two, three, four, five as a leading diagonal, that ends our wave one, and now we're working in a wave two rather. So this move is now deemed corrective rather than impulsive. So we're gonna be working in a possible one, three, or a possible AC of a move here. So we're replacing that waves one and three for the possible as a wave A and C. So this ending dia or leading diagonal rather has ended with an overshoot. I don't like this idea since it's overshooting quite a bit and the contracting look is quite large in comparison to this ABC. But again, it's not invalid. But again, this idea has to be there since we have a possible ABC in the making here. And we do have our internal structures intact, just like our other scenarios. And as long as this wave three gets, or wave two gets rejected at these major, major Fibonacci levels, then we're gonna be looking for a major move. Again, it's not confirmed until these lows are broken. This idea just starts to increase in probability as we start to come lower in these regions here, creating another hybrid idea that we can be working the A or one, and then three or C, and that is where we're gonna be start talking about this idea a little bit more more but for now this idea is now just starting to show its peak validity that we might be finishing off this wave too but again i don't like this idea rather because just a little bit off in terms of the right look ideally what i would personally like to see is this still working in a complex structure where we're working as an abc into wave w and then we go for another corrective structure possibly down into these regions here and that'll give us a wave x and then another three-way move possibly into wave W, and that'll give us a completed double zigzag for wave two, and that in relation to the size and time for this leading diagonal, I think that this kind of idea can be essentially this a very, very possible idea that if we do correctively do this, this idea can't be a one, three anymore, rather as an ABC into wave W, X, and Y, then this idea becomes highly more validated and can be increased in probability from there. So those are the ideas right now. Again, we're, we, we're going to summarize this idea in terms of our expectations. My Still, I'm going back and forth between uh, scenario number one and scenario number two. If we do impulse further right now, looks like right now at the time of recording is trying to do so. If we come up for a large higher wave five where we can adjust this internal structure as a wave three and then expand a flat for wave four and then five going into wave three of the primary degree, this idea is going to give this idea a little bit more validation and more room to work with the wave four before it enters the price territory of wave one. And if that happens, then our next idea of the double zigzag scenario is going to be uh, our next idea, which is now still becoming my primary between the alternative and primary idea between those X, that X wave that we're working for and this double zigzag that is now complete. So either way, I think overall, we have a pretty strong good ra risk reward ratio as long as these lows are protected. And we are pretty high up from those protected lows, 20% or so. And that gives us quite a bit of time for us to work in, in, in some kind of range for a possible one, two, or that X wave. Again, everything is bullish from that uh, conclusion. So for now, I'm still bullish on my thesis. I think that we're still going to be seeing new all-time highs before we see a larger correction. Again, we want to be as 
po uh, rational as possible, right? I mean, I do have some alternative ideas, even possibly for a possible larger flat idea where, again, the same idea for that WXY, just so we had for that um, d leading diagonal idea. This could even be a WXY, and we can be working on a larger flat. But again, this doesn't fit on the macro, and that's why I'm not even narrow down, narrowing down these scenarios, and I'm only showing you those three possible ideas because those are the highest probable scenarios that I believe is going to be happening. So hopefully that was helpful, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you're not already in my Discord membership, please feel free to reach out if you wish or would like to join for a small fee. The X4 Discord membership link is in the description below. Please don't hesitate to contact me. And again, if you're not following me on social media, at X, formerly known as Twitter, at X First Global, please do follow me because I do get more daily updates, including altcoins and a little bit more uh, sentiment updates on that uh, platform as well. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.